Okay. Hello, great souls. Welcome to our Living Yoga Satsang Talk. Let's begin together with a prayer. Heavenly Father, Divine Mother, Friend, Beloved God, Great Masters of Self-Realization, Jesus Christ, Babaji Krishna, Lahiri Mahashaya, Swami Sri Yukteswar, and Paramahansa Yoganandaji, Saints of all religions, Friend and Guide, Swami Kriyananda, we humbly bow to you all. Guide our time together. Help us to dive deeply into these yogic teachings and to awaken to our own divine potential and to be a channel of divine grace, divine love and light in this world. Om. Peace. Amen. Okay, so today we're uh, moving on to the yamas. We've been talking about the, or I'm sorry, the niyamas. We've been talking about the yamas, and now we'll move to the niyamas. And I'm referring from the art and science of Raja Yoga. So these are um, the niyamas. So I'll read a little bit from Raja and then talk about it. <clears throat> Niyama means non-control. It refers to the observances or dues on the path of yoga. The rules are listed um, as five. Cleanliness, contentment, tapasya, which also means austerity, swadhaya, or self-study, and devotion to the Supreme Lord. So each week I'll take one of the niyamas and we'll talk about it and explore it together. So we'll begin with cleanliness. <clears throat> As with the rules of yama, those of niyama must be understood in a subtle as well as in an obvious sense. Cleanliness means not only physical cleanliness, but also a heart cleansed of attachments and of the vain preoccupations of a worldly mind. So I want to talk a little bit about the many ways in which we can practice cleanliness. There is, as it says, the obvious practice, which is you can look at your physical body and also your physical space. In the practice of yoga, one of the things that uh, we become aware of is the impact of our environment on our consciousness and the impact of our physical body on our consciousness. So looking at our physical environment, if you've ever had the experience of being in a space that is um, cluttered and dirty, right? So kind of combine those two. There can, be, there can be space that has a lot in it that isn't dirty, and then you can have a lot in it and dirty. And both of those things can be very heavy on our consciousness. And there's, there's a number of reasons for it, but if we look primarily at energy, there is literally an energy to those items. Now, sometimes clutter, I'll speak for myself because it can happen in my life, in my physical space. I really try not to have clutter, but it happens. And then suddenly this one area, there's a stack of things on it. You know, I'm putting it there. We had a, um, my husband James and I, we had a good friend who shared a, an expression, a little uh, acronym to help with clutter, and it's called Ohio, so see if I remember it, which is only handle it once. I think that works. <laughs> I'm not spelling it out. But we'll say to each other sometimes, and, and what I've noticed with clutter, and it's interesting when you talk about the impact on consciousness, is that how it can happen for me, I'm busy doing something, I have an item, and I think, okay, this needs to go somewhere. And maybe I'm rushed in that moment, maybe it's, it's I'm, I don't have the time, maybe I, um, 
my energy isn't up very high, so I don't feel like putting it away. I mean, there's just these different reasons I've observed in myself. Like, why do I ever have clutter? <laughs> I'll ask myself, because it happens. And when I remember Ohio, it has helped me. Like, I'll start to put it down here, when really, why not just go in the other room and put it away? Now, sometimes it's because items don't have a home yet. And I know that when we moved into the Ananda community, we moved into a smaller space, and we are still in the practice of what I would call, or sometimes is called downsizing, where we're letting things go. And when we moved into the space, we made the commitment only to keep those things that are serviceful and meaningful in our life and also uplifting. And this is a yoga practice and other practices around clearing clutter, I've heard them talk about this, the importance of having items that are uplifting. So, uh, so I will, as Asha sometimes says for herself, give herself a little bit of a break, like not be too hard on myself about my imperfection around clutter. Is I haven't figured it all out yet. But that being said, it is a yogic principle, and I know it's a very important one, to have a clean space. And every time I clean our space, every time I'm able to clear some clutter, organize, I am amazed at how uplifted I feel, just walking into the space. And I notice that when I go to someone else's space that's cleared. Um, Kamala Devi recently gave a beautiful class called Making Room for God. I don't know if it's still available. Um, if it is, I recommend it. So I don't know if you can find it, but it was really lovely. And one of the places, one of the aspects of the class that she talked about was this aspect of how do we make room in our physical space for um, an uplifted consciousness? And she shared a personal story that I observed her go through where she really took on um, a huge project of, of selling the family home. The kids had moved out and been long out of, of the home. And she didn't need to live there by herself anymore. And she really was spending more and more time in the community. And it was time to make the transition. And it was a big um, project to let everything go. And I know from others, I mean, we moved from a home, so I really understand. It's, it's quite a commitment to make a decision as she did and say, I'm gonna do it all. <laughs> I am removing everything that's not needed anymore. Even that, there were some phases to it she talked about. But I, I was so inspired and I'm still inspired by watching her do that and how it impacted her, the lightness that it created for her, and the freedom in the heart. So this is the other thing that's so interesting. When we clear our physical space, we can come upon things that create a heaviness in our heart that we're not even aware of. And sometimes it's because she used the example of nostalgia, that you can be nostalgic for something. And then she just asked us to explore that a little bit. Like, what is it in that nostalgia? What, what's happening there? And what she shared for herself and then others in the class explored was how we can, um, it can be a way of not moving forward, of not freeing ourselves to be in present time or open ourselves to what's wanting to come into our life now. And I resonated with that. Both uh, my husband James and I, we, we laugh about this together. We, we discovered after we were married that we, both of us can have a little bit of a tendency. There's an expression called pack rat that you might know. So we have a little bit of that. And enough so that with both of us having it, <laughs> it can get us into trouble. So what we decided to do was make an agreement with each other that if one of us was looking at an item that was ours, right, and feeling, I'm ready to let this go, give it to Goodwill or a friend or see, let's, let's give it to another home. That if one of us was, was moving in that direction, we asked that the other not raise any questions like, are you sure? <laughs> you don't want to keep that for some reason? Because what we discovered is that's all it took. 
just that, just that thought would weaken our resolve to release it. And we both know how good it feels. And we recently took a trip um, to Goodwill. And it's amazing. You know, we drive there and, and part of it is I feel so good about what I'm offering to others when I'm not this recent time with some clothing. But whatever the items are, if we are not using them, it does not feel good to have them. They're just sitting there. They're taking up space and there's an energy to it. And when they can be given, certainly with a spirit of joy, um, but it also brings joy is what I find. So um, yeah, so cleanliness in the physical realm, kind of taking a look at your, at your home, at your living space. I mean, most of us are at home now with shelter in place all the time. But others, you know, depending on the situation, they, are, they have offices they can go to. So whatever the physical space that you inhabit, bring into your awareness, you know, have a practice in which you take a look around and see, how's it working for you? How is it supporting you? Is it uplifting you vibrationally? Is it, um, so we're looking at clean and orderly, and you decide for yourself what that is. You know, we're all different. I saw a film a number of years ago, I think it was called Minimalism, I think was the name of it. And what it was saying in the film is that the, the two young men who were leading the project, basically a documentary, um, and if I have the title right, it was a lovely film, very inspiring about releasing, but again, also talking about attachment energetically, um, having more than we really need and how that can weigh us down and become a burden in our life. One of the things that they were saying in their film is, you know, you, it's not about doing it anybody else's way. So also they were quite minimalist in their life when they were working with groups and working with others. Um, they would say, if you're reading books and you want to have a library in your home, have a library in your home. That's serving you. That's serviceful for you. It's, it's simply look around and ask the question, am I enjoying the things that I have in my life? Are they really serving me in my journey? And this is part of what we look at with cleanliness. So with physical body, we look at cleanliness in the way that we take care of the body physically, literally showering, bathing, having clean clothes, um, being a good steward of our body. So making an effort. In my early years with uh, yoga teacher training, and I've heard it repeated in, in different ways, the, one of the things that we were trained in as yoga teachers is, to, is a balance between paying enough attention to your presentation so that it is respectful of those you are serving. And really what we were told is, you know, don't just throw anything on and certainly don't teach in dirty clothes. That might seem what would I say? Like, well, why would anybody do that? And what I want to, and I told this one teacher, uh, Savitri, in this particular course who was teaching it, I, uh, how often I've thought of her talking about this, but I had a day, very full day. I was teaching, you know, I, I was all lined up and I remember getting ready for class and I was trying to decide, you know, I was getting dressed and the thought came into my mind, I'm sure that's fine, like whatever it was. And as soon as I had that thought, I realized I'm not, take five more minutes. Take five more minutes. Like, is that really the top to wear? Now this just seems like a very small thing, but it's the consciousness with which we bring to everything we do. This is part of yoga. Savitri told a story on herself that I often share in the yoga teacher trainings. It's a real story and it always stayed in my mind where she was teaching a class and right before class, uh, was having dinner, she had dinner, and then she went to teach, and what she didn't notice is she had spilled all down the front of her top, of spaghetti, <laughs> and she didn't know it. And so then she taught the whole class, and at the end of the class, one of the students pointed that out to her, and she, you know, just felt terrible about it. Um, 
And what she was saying is this particular student didn't appreciate it, that they'd paid money for a class. And, you know, my goodness, that's, that's, that's quite something to hear that and receive that. But she made a point of telling us, take a moment and just check yourself. And Swamiji talked about this. So it's a very interesting thing because here we pay, it's a balancing act between paying enough attention to be a good steward and be respectful of our interaction in the world and no more than that. So body consciousness can really be a trap. And one of the things I loved and still love about Ananda and Ananda Yoga was modesty. So I was very new to yoga postures when Ananda came in my life. So I really hadn't had any other experience with yoga postures. I later learned that how body focused they can become. With Ananda yoga, it's spiritually focused. So we work with the body and part of yoga posture practice is very cleansing for the physical body in terms of toxins. It releases tension and it detoxes the system. So it's a, it's a very powerful, wonderful practice for cleanliness. Again, you have body awareness, but it's a building block. You tend to the body, you take care of the body, and you go deeper. You go deeper into the energy within the body, the consciousness within the energy. And we're, the entire journey is one of lifting our awareness and lifting our understanding to awaken to our own soul potential, our own divine self. So these practices are building blocks, right? Cleanliness, we don't want to be overly focused on the tool or the practice and become obsessive with it or judgmental of ourselves or judgmental of someone else. There's a, Yogananda had an expression to take reasonable care of the body and then forget about it. And that's a beautiful way to practice cleanliness, to take reasonable care of the home, to take reasonable care of the self, and then let it go. With the, the physical body in particular, especially when we look at health, it's very easy to become overly focused on it and to keep trying to perfect it as if that is somehow the answer to joy and fulfillment. And in the yoga teachings, the body is not the answer. The body is something we are given and everything in the material realm is meant to be something that we relate to from our highest truth and our highest self. So I'm just listening now for, let me look, let me take a, a look here at the end, if I can find. This is towards the end of the um, writing on cleanliness in the Raja book. Cleanliness on all levels helps to free the mind that it may soar in the infinite skies. In meditation, approach God with a pure heart offering up all your desires to him. In the practice of hatha yoga too, cleanliness must be considered a paramount principle. It is probably the essence of hatha yoga practice, involving as it does the removal of toxins and other physical impurities of tension and obstructions to the flow of energy in the body. Hatha yoga concentrates less on increasing one's energy than on removing those impurities which prevent one from having the perfect strength and radiant well-being that are his spiritual birthright. So what we're looking at with the practice of cleanliness is clearing away all that is obstructing our ability to experience our divine soul nature and that's the way to practice. Start where you are. Start with um, what you can work with. And I would say practice with a lightness of spirit. So not to head into this with a heaviness. Oh, here's all the ways in which I'm failing and now I'm gonna take on a big project. 
Um, Kamala Devi, when I talked about her big project, she did that with joy. She did that with a lightness of heart. She was ready. And that's an important, really important part of the practice. Do little bits. Work in small ways. It's amazing how much a little bit of effort can shift the energy and free us, um, allowing, as it says, our soul to soar in skies of inner freedom. So I invite you to practice the Niyama of cleanliness this week and see how that supports you in your journey. Great to be with you today. Wishing you a beautiful day and a beautiful week. Om, peace. Amen.